In today's video, we're going to be creating three different sci-fi textures. It's all going to be based on very similar setups. So we're going to create it once and then duplicate it and make the changes. It's going to be rather simple. So let's get right into the tutorial. If you want to figure out how I set up this scene, you can check the last section of this video where I've gone through how I set it up. But with that, we'll just start off directly with the material. So essentially, all three of them are going to use Voronoi textures, which is the base. So I'll search for a Voronoi texture and let's just plug the distance into the base color to see what we have initially. Now this doesn't quite look like the sci-fi texture that I'm going for. So I'll switch this from Euclidean to Chebyshev and I'll also change this from F1 to F2 to just get more variation. Now in order to control the colors of this, instead of using a color ramp, we can actually search for a brick texture and plug the distance into the vector. That way we get these really cool lines whose colors can be changed by changing the colors over here. Now there is already a slightly bluish hue and that's coming from the HDRI that's lighting up the scene, but essentially that doesn't matter too much and we'll just give this two different sci-fi colors. So let's go with a blue and another type of blue and we'll keep the mortar as black itself. And then we can take the metallic slider on the principal BSDF and change it all the way to one so that it's really nice and metallic. Then to actually add in some shininess in various areas, we can take this brick texture itself and pass that through a color ramp node. So let's search for a color ramp, take the color and plug it into the factor and take this color and plug it into the roughness. After that, we'll change this from linear to constant and we'll slowly bring this slider back in and I'll change the black from a value of 0 to a value of 0 0.3 so that it's not completely non-reflective. And similarly for the white, I'll change this from a value of 1 to a value of 0 0.8 so that it's not completely non-reflective either. So that is the material that I have. Now, of course, you don't have to make this constant. You could as well keep this on ease or something like that and move this over to the side. It's all personal preference, but that's about it for the roughness. The next thing that we have to do is actually give it some bump. So we'll press Shift A, search for a bump node, which will convert the color data into normal data. We can plug this into the height and plug the normal into the normal of the principal PSDF. That way we just get some protrusions which look fairly cool. You can always play around with the strength to make it less bumpy but I think I'm going to leave the strength all the way at one itself. And that's actually it for the first sci-fi texture. This is what it looks like on spherical objects and this is what it looks like on plane objects. Now to start off the second sci-fi material let's just select these two press shift D Y and bring it over to the side and then select this material press this button to create a duplicate which is its own material so that changes are not affected to anything else and label this as sci-fi material 2 and then select this sphere shift select this cube and press ctrl l link materials now for this one i'm actually going to take this brick texture and disconnect the voronoi texture and just press ctrl t with the node wrangler enabled to add in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes then i'll switch to object and i'll plug this vector into the vector of the voronoi texture as well and i'll switch this from f2 to f1 so that it's not as intense and i'll use the color value into the scale of the brick texture and that way you get these really cool sci-fi panel like shapes which can be their own sci-fi material. Of course just like last time if you want to change the colors you can go ahead and make them whatever colors you want. So this one I'm going to go with a red and orangish color and that's it for sci-fi material 2. Sci-fi material 3 is going to be slightly different so let's press shift D Y and bring it over to the side and do exactly what we did before. Select this one press this button to make it its own material. Change the name to sci-fi material 3. Select this sphere. Shift select this cube press ctrl l link materials now we're going to actually remove this brick texture by tapping x and we're going to use this Voronoi texture itself we're going to switch this back to f2 and i'm going to press shift d to create another variation of it now i'm going to bring the distance from the first Voronoi texture into the vector of the second Voronoi texture and use this distance as the color of the principal bsdf but we'll change it using a color ramp and we'll also use it as the factor to this color ramp that controls the roughness and we'll also use it for the height map of the bump node and we'll also use it for another node which will control the emission. We'll deal with that in a second. We'll start off by playing with the base color and actually fixing the scale because right now I feel like there's way too many small lines. So I'll change the scale here down to 2.5 and the scale here down to 2.5 as well. So with the scales at 2.5 on both of them, this is what we have. Now to change the color, we'll press shift A and search for a color ramp node. Plug that in between the distance and the base color of the principal PSDF and just play around with the colors. So I'll go ahead and change this black color to maybe a greenish color and we'll change this one to to maybe a lemon greenish color then control click to add in a new stop here and make this a complete black and have fun playing around with the sliders until you get a distribution that you like once i'm happy with that i want to actually start with the emissive materials or the emissive parts so let's press shift a search for another color ramp node or we could have duplicated the color ramp that's already present and as usual we'll take the distance and plug it into the factor then we'll press shift a and search for a math node and switch this from add to multiply so that we can have emission strengths even greater than one make sure that you have bloom and 
enabled and you can also switch on screen space reflections as well to just make all of these materials look much better with screen space reflections. Then we can take this color and plug it into the first socket and change the second socket to something like 10 so that we get some nice bloom but essentially only the white areas that come out from this color ramp will light up. Let's plug this value into the emission strength and initially change the emission all the way to the brightest white there is so that we can control the areas correctly before we give it the color. Let's just drag this in and I think if you want these areas to be lit up this is fine enough but if you don't want these to be lit and you want the other sections to be lit you can switch the color ramp over and then bring this to the side and see if any of these are the ones that you want to be lit up. So I feel like I like the other side better so I'm going to bring it back here bring this over to the side and change this from linear to constant and just drag this in till I get a few of them to be lit and then I'll change the emission color from this white to a nice green and I'll just crank up the value until they glow to a nice sci-fi looking amount. So that's actually it for all three of these materials which can be created very fast very easily. You can store each of these materials as different assets and drag them in in future projects. If you want to know how to use the asset browser stay tuned because either tomorrow or day after tomorrow's video is going to be a dedicated video on how you can use the asset browser. So until that video comes out check out other videos on my channel because I post one video every single day and while you do that keep creating and stay creative. This section is for those of you who wanted to see how I set up the entire scene. So it's fairly simple. The first thing that I did was press shift A and search for a mesh icosphere and go to the drop down over here and increase the subdivisions to something like five so that it's really nice and smooth. Then I'll just go to the object panel over here and switch the shading to shade smooth. Then I'll press G Y and bring it to the side and scale it up by maybe 1.2 just to make it roughly the same size as the cube. After that, the cube already has the default material linked to it. So I'll select my icosphere, rename this to just sphere and then shift click the cube cube and press ctrl l link material. Now both the cube and the icosphere has the material set which we can rename to sci-fi material 1. Then we don't need the default light so we'll select it and tap x to delete it. After that for the world settings we can bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, change this to the shader editor and switch from object to world. There with the background node selected and node wrangler enabled, if you want to know how to enable node wrangler go to edit preferences, add-ons and just search for node wrangler and make sure that it's checked and if you have that checked you can press ctrl t to add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now you can switch to object although this portion is not that necessary but the most important is choosing an HDRI using this button. So once you've opened up your HDRI to actually see it you can switch your viewport shading from solid to rendered and that's what it looks like but obviously I don't want the background to be seen at all so I'll shift this to the side press shift a search for a mix shader plug it in here then duplicate this background node and just plug this into the second slot and for the factor I'll search for a light path node and plug the is camera array into the factor of the mix shader and with that I'll switch back to object and I'll select my original cube and I'll actually begin the tutorial from this point on and you can follow along from the beginning of the tutorial from this point if you needed to.